D.S. Yoxheimer and this is another edition of The Spectre. And um, I don't really like to talk about issues or topics. Um, usually I have steered towards, as of late, talking about movies and, and just, you know, TV shows and other kind of fringe topics. Uh, I'm even going places. I've done some excursions. Um, going to uh, places of interest. Not so much abandoned places, but I guess I did the places that I did go to were abandoned. I think the three lengthy videos that I have done, although there are only maybe, I think, three of them. So, anyway, in my whole, you know, series of videos, um, I'm going to be talking about something that I've discussed here and there before um, over the years, and it's pundits. Um, and really, what pundits are, as you know, um, they, uh, they basically, well, punditry is cheap, is what it is. It's cheap. It's basically the equivalent of, to me, and no offense against strippers, it's like, um, it's, it's the, perhaps journalistic or, um, equivalent of maybe being a stripper or, um, prostitute of sorts because it's it's cheap it doesn't require a lot of intellect um, it requires you to let's say um, well I don't these people don't have morals in the first place so and I mean I'm speaking of people of course just to name a few people like Rush Limbaugh who's been in the game a while Sean Hannity uh, Bill O'Reilly, who well, he lost his job at Fox News, but he's he's on the blaze, I think, now with Glenn Beck. Glenn Beck is another one. Uh, Tommy Loren, who's more of a uh, almost a uh, glorified YouTuber, um, who lost her job on the blaze um, because she was on the View, and she said that she, she essentially says that she was pro-choice, um, <laughs> kinda. Well, basically by saying she didn't want. Um, the government to pay for abortions or anything like that. No, no publicly funded abortions, but she didn't care if people got them because she's a, she's heartless. And I, and I will reserve saying the C word about her, but it's tough because she's an awful human being. But punditry is cheap, They're, but it's like this. Um, it, it had a built-in audience, the conservative punditry in it, and, and the, whatever's considered liberal, um, you have a built-in audience there too. But the conservative audience is very, they're, um, they're true believers. And I think maybe that's where they, because they really show up. They don't phone in. I'm, I'm talking about the supporters. Um, they really, really believe in, in, in uh, their pundits. And some of the pundits who have the audacity to call themselves journalists. But... But it, but it's not it, it's not really they don't like journalism that's the thing journalism's boring real news is boring um, it doesn't sell it's not clickbait in this day and age and but the reason what start what started the conservative pun I mean conservatism of course has been around for for as long as for the age for all ages almost um, I'm not sure when like let's say the modern um, well, really the modern um, brand of of uh, conservatism kind of came about in the late 70s and early 80s when the religious right um, became infused with the Republican Party. And that's when you started hearing a little bit more God in our politicians. And not that they didn't talk about it before, but it was used in a very nefarious way to emotionally manipulate voters. And the conservative pundits, and, and Rush Limbaugh is probably the, the the one who's been, who's currently um, still around and has been operating for for the longest. He he's I think, and this is my thinking on it. He talks like a lot of conservatives talk when they were at the bar by themselves, or you know, um, shooting the shit at work on break, um, at home, you know, away from um, maybe more liberally minded people or I would say more moderately minded people because conservatives used to be more moderate. Um, you had more moderate, um, a more moderate sect of conservatives that worked with Democrats and that's gone away, that's gone. 
Um, now we have, you know, you know, two very polarizing groups. Um, and I would say extremist leftists and extreme right people, you know, who are way out there on the edge, um, are, I'm not going to say crazy, they're assholes. Um, I, I think they are basically contributing to, like, you know, they're just contributing to the storm. They're feeding the hurricane, as it were. You know, they're not doing any good at this point. Um, look at what we got um, as a result of this storm. We, we have a, a disaster of a president. So, um, that's kind of my take on it. I mean, it's a, it's a little bit more, it's, it's, it's more of, um, you know, um, an analogy, of course, but I think it, it I think it fits. Um, and it just, it really just bugs the fuck, I mean, everything bugs the fuck out of me lately. Like, just the way movements are, are, uh, organized in this country. Everything is like a hashtag movement. I refer to it jokingly as hashtag wah, because to me that's most of what it is. And I'm not saying I'm not behind what these movements are about. I don't, you know, I, I'm certainly not for women being sexually harassed or assaulted. But I think hashtag me too is, is awful. It is, it's, well, I think it's, it's, um, it's dishonest, and here's why. And it's not, and I'm not, it's because, because it's mostly celebrity driven. It, this is, it's a celebrity and social media driven movement that doesn't give a fuck about some girl who works at a department store, like Target, I'm not targeting Target, but I'm just for an example, who is getting sexually harassed or got sexually assaulted by their superior at work. Um, if she came out and tried to speak up about it. She couldn't because she doesn't have a voice. I mean, Ashley Judd has a voice and Taylor Swift. That's why they're on the cover of Time Magazine, whose person of the year was hashtag um, me too. And which doesn't make any sense because she plural persons because there were lots of women on the cover. Um, and the reason I, and there's another point and I know I'm, it, it may be a little bit of a tangent, but a year ago, about a year ago, when the uh, Women's March on Washington happened, uh, excuse me, um, at this march there was, of course, Ashley Judd and Madonna being fucking idiots, and then there was another woman there named Donna Hilton. I think I pronounced it right, or Donna Hilton. There's a Y. It's not a Hilton like, you know, Paris Hilton. Um, she's a woman who spent about in 28 years in prison um, because she, with some accomplice, accomplices, kidnapped a man for ransom and tortured him to death. And by tortured him to death, I mean they tamped a pipe up his ass. Um, he died. And uh, Donna Hilton even delivered the ransom note. I don't know exactly what she had you know, her involvement in the act, the violent acts, or torture of this indi poor individual. Um, and I'm not saying the individual that they did this to is necessarily, a, you know, a boy scout or whatever. I don't really know much about him. I guess he was a wealthier individual. From what I understand, he was even gay. Um, which doesn't mean he was bad. I don't know what too many details about him. But the point is, she was a keynote speaker at this march. Now, I think Donald Trump is a complete and utter fucking revolting scumbag. I also think the same thing of Donna Hilton. I mean, she did her time. She was in prison. Um, a lot of people would have done life for that. Um, I would imagine, or spent a lot more time in the joint. But they wouldn't come out of jail and become a human rights advocate or whatever. She's, she's, um, I think she works with uh, prisoners' rights and things like that. And not that I don't agree, you know, I don't, I agree that, you know, prisoners should be treated humanely, um, um, for the most part, I mean, you know, some people do horrible fucking shit, you know, want them treated humanely, but I just don't understand how Ashley Judd, who's on the cover of Time Magazine, standing up 
for women who are being abused and sexually harassed in her industry would be at an event like that and and be cool with it and not say anything. And the thing with this whole with that whole movement anyway, and I know I'm getting away from just talking about pundits, but this is kind of part of it, is is that they it, it's just this this whole like they basically are they basically are the ones who are the arbiters of the language of how we're supposed to talk about all this shit. We're supposed to talk about it. It's like basically it's women saying, you know what, you fellas need to need to like get in line. You need you need you you know you need you need to really you know watch your shit and get it together. Like men are the only only people who are capable of sexual misconduct. Men are the only people like women good, men bad. You know, when a lot of this news was going on about Harvey Weinstein, who I think is a fucking disgusting, rotten, vile human being, among these other individuals like Kevin Spacey, and um, I don't know who else, there's a lot of celebrities, but those were the two big names at the beginning of all this. Um, there were three teachers I read about just going, scrolling through the, you know, news feed on my phone, who fucked their students. Three female teachers who banged their students. Were they on the news? Was it on the news all day? Was it talked about? Was it, was it used to sort of temper this whole conversation about sexual harassment or misconduct? And I know what I'm doing right now. I'm doing exactly what I was speaking out against at the beginning of, of this. And I was saying how much I find, you know, I, I am, I find pundits to be nefarious and cashing in on um, people, other people's opinions, because they have the same opinions. Um, that's how I feel about it, personally, my opinion. And that's worth about what? Nothing. It's just how I feel about it. And that offends some people, I'm sure, because they don't think I'm taking um, women's stories seriously. I do take them seriously. I believe them. I think um, the stories should have been investigated. I don't think they sh these people should be, these men should be tried in the court of public opinion, nor do I think those teachers should be tried in the court of public opinion. They should be tried in a court of law. They shouldn't just lose their jobs overnight, personally. Um, and, you know, and, that, and, and in showbiz, that's just a lot of the people who, like with Kevin Spacey, for instance, they were just covering their asses because they knew how he was behaving on the set of that show. And um, when Anthony Rapp uh, came out, he's in the you know, new Star Trek series, Star Trek Discovery. Um, when he was younger, he was 14. He also started in Rent, if that helps you. If you didn't watch Star Trek, he's the um, guy in Rent. Um, he, um, when that came out, of course, it was just it just all his house of cards fell. Kevin Spacey, and rightfully so, you know, he, he fucked up. He's he's got some severe character issues there, but at the same time, I don't. Um, it just turned into a hysteria and a fucking witch hunt. Like every time somebody says something, it's automatically true, and they should. These stories should be taken seriously, and they should be looked into. If a woman's at work anywhere in this country, if a man's at work anywhere in this country, and they're and they're they've been. Um, mistreated at work in any way, shape, or form. Human resources should do their job and address it. Oftentimes they don't. Where I've worked, they haven't. Um, it, it's, it's, you know, it's the way things work in this country. Um, there's a lot of people that they are in management positions and they are in HR and, and they don't know what they're doing or they abuse their power. Um, they are not available to their employees in the way that they are supposed to be, and there's no one holding them accountable for it. Um, unfortunately, that's just the way things work, and it, and it sucks because it makes it really difficult for people like me, who um, I am just an employee, not even a supervisor where I work. Um, that's fine. I'm not complaining that I'm not a supervisor, but it would be nice if they listen to their employees once in a while when things like this are going on. And I'm not saying they don't do that anywhere, but it, um, in the many jobs I've had over the years, it's not the case. Employees in this country 
have very little fucking say. And that's another issue nobody's talking about in this country. Um, there's a lot of things. I mean, um, just before this whole sexual harassment thing came up, um, there was, you know, two of the biggest, well, one of the biggest shootings in shooting sprees in American history, pretty much, was in Vegas. And then there were that, that asshole went to that church in Texas. He shot 23 people, killed them um, with, a, with, a, with a semi-automatic assault weapon. And um, they kind of just really stopped the conversation about that. Nobody gives a shit. Um, that frustrates me. And I do take sexual harassment seriously. And I do take, I mean, those stories needed to get out. And they, they were important stories. They should have reported on it. But there's other shit going on too still. And it's just like one story kind of dilutes everything else. It just basically, it just becomes like, you know, the water and all the other little stories are little just tiny, tiny islands kind of, you know, they get smaller and smaller and they get drowned out. And because it's a, because it's a showbiz story, they're talk about it it's just going to, it's still getting talked about. It's, it's goes on and on and on. It's like when Charlie Sheen was being an asshole a few years back when he left Two and a Half Men, and they followed it all the time. Why? He's just a jackass. You know? Um, he's a fucking psychopath. I mean, what, why, why are you, it's just, but it, but it's like people are following it. It's the, it's the, it's the proverbial OJ Bronco. People will follow it. It does, it's, it's, um, and it's still going on. Um, we don't um, demand that we we uh, that that we have that we be be a well informed public. We we don't we don't we just like we just basically it's just fast food to us. That's what our news is. It's just we just waddle up and oh, give me another Big Mac and some fries and. Take another share for later. For later. You know, all these like Perez Hilton sites and TMZ and, and basically Fox News. Um, that's the fucking, I, John Stewart famously said it's like the Arby's of news. Or he might have said that specifically about Sean Hannity, who's about the biggest fucking piece of shit, trouser stain low life on the face of the earth. Um, and all of them. And now Tommy Loren is on Fox News. She's like, what is she, 24 years old? Well, wait, wait a, wait a client, wait a earn your way up the ladder there. God, she, she is, she is, she's just a, oh, she's a vicious little shrew. And it's phony. Her act is phony too. Um, she's just, she just, she's just basically someone who like. She rehearses her little routine of being snarky and condescending and acting like she's right all the time and defending Donald Trump no matter what horrible thing he does. And that's, that's what they all do, you know? Um, and that's really my, how I look at all of this. And I, I mean, I don't know, I don't know how any other way to look at it. Because, I mean, I read comments online for my hometown paper, um, which is, I mean, I go back and forth with those people sometimes, and they're horrible. They're awful, you know? Um, they're, you know, conservative, right-wing Christians that defend a guy who sexually assaults women and look the other way. Like, um, I don't look at, like, I didn't really, even the candidates that I voted for, I didn't really believe in. They were just, to me, the lesser of two evils. You know, I knew Clinton was a womanizer. You know, I wouldn't defend him now. Um, as far as Al Franken's concerned, I don't know exactly what went on. We really don't, but he stepped down because it was, you know, more or less take one for the team. And he did some stuff that was inappropriate, and as well he should. And... The president really sh well he won't resign, <laughs> but he'll I guess at least he'll have the we'll have the um, delight in watching him crash and burn, which I I don't really see him ha you know lasting too much longer. He's um, I think he's losing his fucking marbles, but um, but that's my take on it. Um, you're 
If you happen to stumble across this video, leave your comments below. My name is DS Yoxheimer. This is a video I made because I didn't sleep all night. It's like four in the freaking morning. <laughs> um, that's why I'm, you know, dressed like I just like stumbled into my closet in the dark and got dressed. But um, I thank you for watching. Um, of course, we'll have another video within a week. Um, I hope your new year is treating you well. Um, and take care. Hi, um, my name is DS Yox, I'm again, just a little quick, like, side video, um, whatever you want to call it, after the video video. Um, this is, um, we've been living in this apartment since September of 2017, and I'm not going to really, I don't do tours and shit like that, but, um, so I'm standing near a painting that's hanging near the front door. Um, it's not a real painting, it's something that we got at Big Lots, so I don't think we have a bunch of like freaking fancy, expensive art or anything like that. Um, I was making these videos for years in Williamsport, PA, um, in our house there until we moved um, here while we were living by my folks for a little while, but we moved here. Um, that's just a little bit of background on me. Well, not much background, but. Um, I, uh, um, my fiance is a nurse in the area, and um, I work at the Bloomsburg University um, in their, uh, as a custodian in their sort of commissary uh, restaurant complex, if you want to call it that. I really don't. Um, I just started working there a few months ago, beginning of the fall semester. And um, my background is in, I worked in, well, worked in broadcast in late high school, and I got a degree in broadcast from the Pennsylvania College of Technology in the mid-90s, about 1995. And I went to journalism for, for uh, about a year at Lock Haven University until I flunked out because I flunked economics and some other fucking course. Um, but I wrote for the school paper. Um, that was one of my strengths, I guess. Um, but I hold an associate's degree in broadcast communication and an internship at a television news bureau where I learned how uh, a lot of journalism is just bullshit and showbiz, um, which is what I was sort of getting at in this uh, video. Um, so, uh, but yeah, we've, um, I've been, um, my, me and my fiance Jen have been together for about 10 years. In 2000, or uh, yeah, we got together in 2008, so it was 2018. Um, comes along here. We've been together 10 years, and um, we uh, and um, I. This is the first town I've really lived in um, on a more permanent basis, at least um, for a while. Um, in Bloomsburg, it's a nice little town in the Susquehanna. Valley, I guess this is considered still the Susquehanna Valley, in Columbia County. Um, been here for a while um, before we actually moved in here. We were staying up at her uh, stepfather's place um, when she was recovering from um, a long illness and um, until she could get back to work again. And so that's kind of a little background on me. Um, that's very, I stumble fox through that, of course. Um, but that's basically it. I grew up in Williamsburg, Pennsylvania, which is the home of Little League Baseball. And I graduated high school in 1993 before I went to college. And I did work at a couple of radio stations in that area um, that were bought out by a larger corporation. Uh, but they do exist. And none of those people that work there, some of them are still the same people, but they wouldn't. Uh, per they would pretend not to know me now, like most people I used to know, I'm sure. Um, but yeah, 
And for anybody watching, this is Coke. This isn't booze or anything. So, just so you know, um, I drink way too much coffee lately, though, since I haven't been drinking. So that kind of sucks. <laughs> Keeps me wired. I mean, you got, you got, you really, you can't, you almost can't afford to sleep anymore with Trump as president. I mean, holy shit, it's like you never know what you're gonna fucking wake up to. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed my videos. If you do, I mean, you might not. Um, or you can make fun of them and write horrible mean comments. You're welcome to do that. It's a free country. Um, but I encourage you to subscribe if you feel like it. Um, like my videos if you want to. Um, and um, so, uh, so that's just a little bit of insight in on me. Oh yeah, and I like Star Wars. I'm a big Star Wars fan. Um, I uh, comic books. All that shit. I got, grew up with uh, MTV, part of the MTV generation, the original MTV generation, not these phony kids that grew up on the real world and Jersey Shore and all that bullshit, man. We're the real deal, man. I was there on the ground floor. Um, so that's, so, you know, um, I'll leave you with that little bit of id rant and um, I'll, uh, I'll be up with a new video very soon. Peace out.